Um, Simon, we spoke about your beloved Crystal Palace the other day. Wait, before we get into this, <clears> and the, the, I'm going to talk about Palace, about yeah. the possibility of Roy going, yeah. the possibility of Frank Lampard coming in. Where, are, where is your mind at the moment? Where, where, where's your head about Crystal Palace and <clears> where <throat> they are and where they are trying to get <clears> to? Well, I think they've had a fantastic eight years. Obviously, the ambition I had was to put them in the Premier League and keep them there. And and so do people like Ron Nodes, my predecessors, and these guys that now run Palace, the Americans, have managed to achieve it. So as much as there is not such a thing as an established Premier League club, as Danny Kelly drummed into me every time I did a show with him, mm. Palace have got themselves into a situation where they are a pretty much mainstay of the Premier League. You know, I think five or six years ago, they got into the top ten the Americans that bought the club and put some capital behind it obviously had ambitions to push it further on, and that becomes very expensive. And I think signings like Benteke, who I know is doing well now, have sort of burnt them a little bit when they paid 35 million quid for that player. And yeah. the cost implications of Mamadou Sacco at 26 million quid and Jeffrey Schlopp, they've spent some money, and yet they've still found themselves at times being dragged towards the bottom of the Premier League. I think Palace... Obviously, given the fact that they're a club very dear to my heart, or a fabulous football club, but I think they're in twixt and between, where you don't know whether they're going to stick or twist. Roy Hodgson's been there for four or five years, done a great job. Roy is a very safe manager. If you want to stay in the Premier League, on the whole, Roy Hodgson will give you that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. But is it? I don't know if it's time to turn the wheel and change it up a little bit. Well, that, and you've you've brought me beautifully to, to the point we're at now. So now we hear this morning, and this is in a number of sections in the media, Frank Lampard could be offered a return to the Premier League <coughs> after he has now emerged as a leading candidate yeah. to succeed Roy, should Roy part company uh -huh. with Crystal Palace. We're not taking that as a given anyway. But it's it said that he's amongst the top candidates to be offered the Palace job if Roy goes. He's been out of work since January after he was sacked by Chelsea. In comes Tuchel, the rest is history. My point is this, yeah. and bear in mind, Frank is a real student of the game. I know him yeah. well, and he... He listens to us, he listens to you, he's a fan of yours, he likes the way you describe things, and we're delighted that Frank does tune in, and yeah. we like Frank immensely. We do. Um, at this particular time, would it be a gamble to any degree to appoint Frank to Crystal Palace, or would it be a good fit? Now, you know the club <laughs> and you know Frank. Yeah, but there's a gamble in every managerial appointment you take. It's about how you minimise that risk. And you can never eliminate it. You can't eliminate a risk when you're crossing the road. You can look right and left, and that eliminates a proportion of the risk that you take. But with Frank Lampard, I actually said a couple of months ago that I could see that play. Um, look... It's a risk for Palace because they've got a lot of things under the hood. You know, they're, they're, they've got a Ferrari at times of playing squad with some very decent players in there from the captain through to Wilfred Zaha. But underneath the bonnet, they've got a, a list of players out of contract an array of challenges that will never stop with people like Wilfred Zaha, that despite the fact he will have played and committed himself to Palace, it's been well known that he wants to move on. I know. And the economics of and that... And that's holding them back, isn't it? Well, it is and it isn't. It, you know, it's not holding them back because Wilfred stays there. It will hold them back if Wilfred becomes more... Uh, militant and vitriolic about wanting to leave. Palace, but, but they can't say all the time something that he wants to go and still is a regular and, and someone that the, the club seriously relies on to get them results. Well, yes, and of course the statistics are very are very, are very bare to be seen, aren't they? When Wilfred Zaha plays games, Crystal Palace win games in, in abundance, and when he doesn't, they do not. Right Now, I know that's changed a little bit. They have actually won games without Wilfred, but he is a talisman in the same way that Harry Kane is. You can take a good player of any side and every side will suffer as a result of it. And I'm not comparing Wilfred to Harry Kane. They're different style of players but Frank going into Palace look you, you know I don't think he did a bad job at Chelsea I think all the tools that he assembled right were actually the ones that Thomas Tuchel was now taking the benefit of goalkeeping changes which he had the balls to make decisions on yeah. players that he signed yeah. like Havertz you know and Ziyech and other players that are now players that Chelsea are being able to utilise and these were players who came to Chelsea because of because Frank because of Frank and there'll be an argument about where he played Jorginho and where he played N'Golo Kante and how that looked and shaped up and where Kov Kovacic could have played and what he did with Rudiger and you know there'll be an argument about it because obviously what's happened is it's been night and day all of a sudden Frank was at one point in October November Chelsea were top of the league everyone was going Frank Lampard is the second coming yeah, right? yeah. then bang the wheels fell off Frank didn't have the toolkit to be able to fix it properly and Tuchel's now come in tinker 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 bang look at this I've got a Rolls Royce which was always there and in part was mechanised by Frank Lampard now you take Frank away from that put him into Palace and say different set of players different set of problems different set of ownership not somebody behind the scenes prepared to write checks out left right centre and also a group of players that are used to occupying spaces at the bottom of the league which is not where Frank DNA has no, been. No, no, right? no. Okay, no. he had a season at Derby. Yeah. But I don't think it's a bad fit. 
I don't think it's a bad fit. Now, if you put put him alongside, say, Sean Dyche and say, "Would would I take?" I'd be torn. It would be down to how the interview went, not based upon the perception of what I think Sean Dyche is or what I think Frank Lampard is. It would have to be in the ribs, across the table, whites of the eyes conversation to ascertain who would be better for my club. See, I'm loving this. Right, now you've been in this situation before. So put yourself in the situation again, Simon. You're at Palace and you're looking yeah. for a new manager. Yeah. Frank comes in, interviews well. How would Dyche interview? Would he interview though? Here's the thing. Because here's the conundrum for Sean Dyche. I pick up the phone to Burnley and say, can I have permission to speak to your manager? Burnley say, well, we'd much prefer you didn't. Sean Dyche kicks up rough and says, I want to go and speak to Palace. Palace interview him and perhaps he doesn't get the job. And they have to go skulking back to Burnley, having said to them, I don't want you anymore. I want to go to Palace. So Sean's in a stick or twist situation. If you're Sean Dyche, you say, well, I'll talk to you on the strict understanding that I'm in a box seat for this job. And if I'm the owner of Crystal Palace, I'll be saying, well, you're not in a box seat for this job. You're one of the also's that I'm considering. So you'd have to double down on your decision-making process. You have to go, Sean Dyche is the man for me, unless he makes a bit of a burk of himself when I, dis- when right, I discuss right, it with right, him. Right, right, right. As for, as for Frank, yeah. he would represent a total change of direction, wouldn't he? After Coming in after Roy Hodgson. Now, they have been yeah, there totally. before, yeah. because they went in a different direction, as you mentioned earlier, with Frank de Boer. Yeah, but that was he different. He lasted four games. But that was different. That was that was a, a chairman of a football club sitting there saying, "I want more expansive football," and I think Frank de Boer, because he's foghorn of a brother, is telling everyone how good he is, should be the man to fit it. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to back him. I'm going to throw him out after four games because a few players don't like the way he coaches. Yeah, that was a that was a ridiculous decision that can be easily made, and, it, and you've got to give commendation to the fact they changed it quick. But they let me get inside your head about this. Did, did did your previous appointments that you made in your time at Palace yeah. shape your future ones? Well, they should do, yeah, because your experiences dictate. If you keep on making the same, if you do things the same way, you get the same outcomes, won't you? Yeah. So I try to change it up. You know, I, I went. Is it the same criteria? Yeah, winning. Yeah. yeah. Having the balls well, to win and having God. somebody you can work Lampard, with. Lampard, winner. Not as a manager. Out and out and out. Yeah, but, but you've got to translate the difference between a player and forget him. The player, forget it. Trevor Francis was the million pound footballer, walked in the dressing room, opened his mouth, lost the players. Right? Doesn't matter what he was in the past. Doesn't matter what he said to Clinton Morrison. Clinton Morrison stood up to him, and the rest of the dressing room went, "Well, we're not having you." Right? That's the way it works in football. Doesn't matter what you did; it's matter what you do next. Managers that have great careers as footballers can open their mouth in a dressing room and lose that dressing room, irrespective of what they've done in the past. Because so, so elite players don't necessarily make elite managers. Well, have a look at them. How many have we got? Teddy Sheringham? No. Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank's had a, a, a decent shout at it, but necessarily at a certain level. Pep. Pep is an exception that mm. doesn't prove the rule, but as a matter of course, most of the time it isn't top top players. I know Zidane's gone into Real Madrid, and these are guys that have actually disproved the rule. But I as know the, it's Rangers, but Gerrard's doing okay. Yeah, he is. But that's a, with the greatest will in the world, not to go down a tack of saying that the Scottish league is a, is a league that shouldn't be considered properly. It's a different dynamic in Scotland, and the expectations in Scotland, whilst high on the two sides, the competition on a week to week basis is very different than the elite league of the Premier League. And that's not me diminishing the Scottish league; it's just calling it for what it is. But you think. You, you, you don't think previously elite players necessarily morph into elite managers? No, I think there's a possibility they can, but if you look at the balance of the statistics, and I know statistics are the beginning of a conversation, not the end of it, but if you look at it and say, on the whole, elite players don't tend to make the greatest of managers. Look at the greatest of managers. Who are the greatest? Pep Guardiola, of course, of course, right? But Klopp, mediocre player. Fenger, mediocre player. Sir you Alex. Know, Alex. You know, mediocre. So, oh, he wasn't. He wasn't a top player. And so, I think so he you admit that. But then, of course, you've got other arguments where you can say Pochettino was a top player, played for his country, played for Argentina, and has gone on to be a decent manager. He won anything, though, is he? I'm talking about the guys that really win things. Guardiola is the exception. Zidane is the exception. And Madrid is a freak show. It's a Galacticus morphed yeah. into a com- yeah. com- you know football club that's funded by 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 the municipality. Okay, so I'm biased. We like Frank. I like Frank. Yeah, he's he's been fantastic about about this show. Very cooperative, etc. I've known him all the years I've been in yeah. London. Is he the man? I think he is. I, I'll, I'll put my neck out. I, I would but like you, him to but, get but you the opportunity. But okay. I know Roy <clears throat> might not might not be going. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's inappropriate to suggest that, that that's a done deal. But the Premier League but, is where Frank should be but, managing. Possibly, right? Because Frank, I don't think, has done enough to earn the right to be nailed on for anything. I think he's done enough to be in a conversation to be part of the conversation, to be part of the consideration. Experience, experience, but, yeah, experience. But, but his experience, you're, you're confusing the two things, Jim. You're conflating the brilliance of him as a player with the expectation that that brilliance will translate to, into him as a manager. You're conflating the notion that he's very good with the media 
to the fact that he's a good football manager. I'm not saying he is or he isn't. I think it was harsh that he got taken out of Chelsea. I think he's done a good job there. But Palace is a fit that Frank hasn't worked with him. Derby was trying to get out of a championship, right? And he was able to pull young players in. He's in the big league with Palace with a real need to keep them in the league. And are Palace going to stick or twist? They stay with Roy Hodgson. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to tread water. Roy's a safe manager. You know yeah. what you're going to get. He's cautious. Palace will stay there. And he's cautious because he's got a limited budget. Frank Lampard comes in. He's got to fix all the problems and keep the track on the, the right rails and perhaps deal with the media expectation of Frank Lampard's superstar True. coming in to manage Crystal Palace. Well, apparently they are planning a £50 million summer overhaul that could ins- that that would involve signing four or five new players. Now, well, that's not a lot, is it? You could you could see though. When you think about it, the top the, the big players, yep. and I'm talking Vera Havertz, the ones on yep. the rise in the Bundesliga, wanted to join because of Frank. Yep. he's got that lure, as you would say. He's got that pull. Sure, he's the, the attraction is Frank. Yeah, but he's got that pull, and his owner's got that checkbook. Right? So you can have all the pull in the world he's want if his owner says, "Well, that's lovely. You can get Havertz, but we're not signing him at Crystal Palace because he's sixty million quid." So what <laughs> do we think, Frank Lampard? If Roy Hodgson is to go. If he is to leave Crystal Palace, is the fit a good one? Should it be Lampard to Palace? Palace fans, let me know.